the viewer who sold this to me, whose name is Josiah, said that he tripped getting off of an airplane and he broke the power button. A repair shop said the only way to fix this laptop is to replace the motherboard for $450. Josiah offered to sell me this laptop for $150 to see if I could prove the repair shop wrong. And right over here is the power button. And it's kind of hard to see, but this little brown part is the power button that looks to be broken. So it looks like I'm gonna need to remove this entire board so we can get to the other side of the board and inspect this button. My initial impression is that I can probably do it, but it's gonna be a matter of whether I can find that part that's bad, that little button, but I've gotta find an exact match button that'll fit on this board. This video is sponsored by Whatnot, more on them in a minute. This definitely would have been a problem. The fan was just kind of stuffed in here and this uh, little plastic piece was totally covering the heatsink fins. So if it would have been installed like that, it wouldn't have gotten any cooling through this little heat heat sink right here in this heat pipe. And same thing over here. And this antenna wire right here was kind of stuck up inside the hinge instead of being right down on this little tab under there where it should be. So the repair shop that took this apart definitely did not put it back together the way that it should have been put back together. Luckily we'll fix all that when we reassemble it. Okay and I think we have everything removed so we can get the board out. Yes we do. Yep so the little piece that pushes in and out of the button is just totally broken off. Trying to decide whether it looks like they tried to fix this or not. It looks like there's some some solder on the back side that shouldn't necessarily be there. It's kind of weird. So now I have to see if I can find a replacement button. So I found this little board on a junk laptop I just have laying around and it's got this button here, which is pretty close to the size of this button. This is like a, it has one pin here and one pin here. This button has two, but I can't tell whether that's just for mounting or not. So I think what I'm gonna do is remove this button and remove this button and then inspect the board and see what kind of mounting options we have on the board. I think we might have gotten really lucky because as I match these up, these buttons look exactly the same. I'm gonna try installing this one in and let's see what happens. The first thing we need to do though, is fix this little problem. So there's so much solder on these pins right here that I don't think we're gonna get this button to stick on there without bridging these points. So I'm actually gonna remove this solder and then put a little bit of fresh solder on there. We'll see how that works. So I'm gonna use some solder wick and a nice hot iron and the wick will wick up the extra solder on these pads, make it much easier to install the new button. So this is the old button. We can see that somebody definitely tried to fix this button. This right here is a big blob of solder they have on the back side trying to get it to mount better. And this is the front side where you can see how it's broken. There's supposed to be a plastic piece poking out of this and this right back here is the actual button. You can see when I press on it, it moves in. So that's the old one and this is the new one. That is what it's supposed to look like. Now let's see if we can get this one fitted onto the board. Now when looking at the board, we can see that there's this pad that's been torn off. That is a mounting pad and it is a grounded mounting pad. And just this little piece back here is all that's left of it. I don't think that's gonna be too big of a deal. I think we're gonna be able to mount this on nice and tight with just these two pins, but we will try and connect it back here as well, just to make sure that it is soldered on there very solidly. So we need to see if this button will fit on this board though. Okay, and that actually looks pretty good. So right down here, these are the pins that we need to make sure are connected to these pads. So this pin to this pad, this pin to this pad, and then this pad right here is what was connected back here. I'm not sure if this button is just different or what, but it's definitely, it definitely does not reach all the way back there. But the good news is that I think with this mounting pad and this mounting pad, this is still gonna be a pretty solid fit. So now we just gotta get these two pins mounted and then we can fill in these holes right here and that will secure this button to the board. And now with that new button installed, let's apply the perfect amount of thermal paste. Hmm. 
there we go. Now we can get it reassembled and see if it'll work now. If you've ever wanted to buy some of the stuff you see me fix in my videos, next week is your chance. I'll be doing a live Whatnot auction to sell a whole bunch of my game consoles. The best part is Whatnot is sponsoring a PS5 giveaway, so come to my auction and during the auction I'll be giving away this PS5. The date and time of the auction are right in the description and I'll put a link there that'll take you right to Whatnot. Be sure to add your payment information ahead of time and sign up for reminders so you don't miss this huge game console auction. Okay, plugging it into power. And we're getting nothing. Oh, we do have a charge light over here. Okay, that's good news. It may need to charge the battery up a little bit. So I'll let it charge for a bit here and then we'll try it again. Now, as I was reassembling this, I noticed that the actual power button right here and the plastic piece that sticks out that's supposed to hit against the power button on the board, it's actually kind of like underneath this power button. So this tells me that that power button is actually the wrong one for this board. So the shop that had it before actually replaced the power button with this one, but this is the wrong part. That would also explain why the button, while it looks like it fits correctly, doesn't actually fit all the way and connect to that back pad. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm wondering if maybe that back pad is another pin that needs to connect to this button. So unfortunately, I'm back to where I started, except for I have no idea what this power button is supposed to look like. So back to the drawing board to see if I can find that part. So I think I found a button that'll work on this board from a different laptop. It's an old Chromebook that does not work anymore. I've already removed it, but this button is in a similar configuration. It's got an LED on each side, just like the one that we're trying to repair. This is also a different kind of button. Let me show you the difference. This is the kind of button that the other repair shop replaced the original button with on this board. This is the kind of button where we have two ground points, which are these two pins right here. Those are the ones that go through the board. Those are the ground points. And then we have two other contacts. When you press the button, this contact closes and the circuit completes. That's not the kind of button that this computer is meant for. This is the kind of button that is supposed to go on this board. When you press the button, it connects this line to ground, and that's what tells the computer to turn on. That's the kind of button we have right here, so theoretically, this button should work. Let's get it installed and see if it does. Now, I already know that this button does not fit in here exactly how it should, exactly how it needs to, but if it does work, then I think we can modify some things to make it work. Okay. So that actually fits on there okay. My worry is how far this button sticks out because the old button stuck out quite a bit and that made it so the actual power button on the computer didn't make correct contact with the button on the board. But I think we can shave that button down a little bit if we need to, but I wanna make sure this button works first. So I'm gonna finish soldering it on and then we'll see if it's gonna work. Okay, and that button is installed nice and solidly onto the board. Now we just need to put it back together enough to test it. So I have the battery connected. I just want to press this button and see if we get any fans. And if we do, I'll disconnect the battery quickly because I don't want it to fully start up. And then if that works, then we still got to get this thing to fit in and fit correctly with this power button. But let's try it. Come on. Oh, there we go. We got fan spin. Okay. That is great news, but the next problem is getting this thing to fit correctly in here. So with the board installed, it actually fits in there much better than the other one, but the problem is this doesn't bounce back all the way, so it'll press the button, but then it never releases it fully. Um, I might have to shave this off a little bit. I don't want to do that just in case at, at some point if this button became available, then it could be replaced with the correct one. I wonder if we could somehow shift the motherboard over just a little bit. Oh, that works. So I wonder if there's a way, maybe if I screw the motherboard down with some pressure on it this way, maybe that would be enough to make this button work. So I'm gonna put some pressure on the board that way. Then put this screw in. There we go. Let's check the button. Oh yeah, that works great. Okay, so let's get this fully assembled. Then we can test it and see if it'll actually turn on now. And as usual, I had to find screws to put in various spots on this board. 
because of course the repair shop that tried and failed to fix the button also didn't install all the screws back in. I think it'll be fine though. Now time for the back cover, the last few screws, and then we can see if it'll power on. Okay, and here we go. You think it's gonna work? Come on! Oh, I hear fans. Good. And it turned off. Okay, just restarting. <laughs> We're good. Come on. Okay, we got key. Oh, here we go. And there we have it. But will it turn off? Oh, it turns off too. This laptop is fixed. Obviously it needs a new operating system, but it didn't cost $450 like the other repair shop said. We just had to replace that one button. Hopefully someday manufacturers will make little buttons like that accessible to repair people like me because it would be nice to fix something for 25 cents instead of $450. If you like this type of video, you'll probably like the video where I tried to fix five broken high-end gaming laptops. I'll put that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix any of those. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.